All right, guys. So one of the things, if you're doing the uh, auto bed leveling, you're gonna need to update the firmware on your uh, A net board. And uh, I guess the A net board is the type of board that doesn't really have like a, like a bootloader, or it's like an older bootloader. So you need to first upgrade the bootloader before you can load the latest firmware in there. So I'm not sure about the A net board 100%, but I know like Cisco routers and firewalls. Um, there's a thing called like a, a ROMON, it's sort of, sort of like a bootloader. And a, if it's the same as a, as a router, you know, in this ANET world, then uh, a bootloader is a very scaled down version of an operating system, which allows you to load the primary software. So for Cisco, it's kind of like gives you the option for like TFTP or FTP, and it allows you to transfer files over, you know, to the actual main like flash card or whatever you're gonna store the OS. But uh, Sorry for the side rant. So I'm assuming the bootloader process is the same for like any sort of router. It's like a scaled down OS to allow you to load the primary OS. Um, all right, so I gotta take this board apart. I'll show you how to connect this thing. And quick note here is that even though they're both 10 pin connectors, like once I take the board off, you'll see it. I'll point it out to you. But the connector on the motherboard, we're gonna connect this. Even though they're both 10 pin, 10 pin connectors, the pinouts are different. So you can't just connect this thing and actually expect it to work, the uh, USB ASP. So you need this uh, adapter here. It's a 10 pin to six pin adapter. So what that does is it reorganizes the pinouts to the correct orientation for the on the J3 connector on the inet board. So like I said, you can't just directly connect this. You have to change the pinouts to have them match what the board needs. So all right, let me get that uh, going real quick. All right, so I have the board, the screws I'm taking off. So there's a couple different ways you could do this. Uh, so I, I, mean, I need to have power here to, to run this bootloader. And uh, I mean, there's a couple different ways I could do this. Let me take this off the tripod here. I mean, I could run this, I could hook, up, hook this up to a power supply, 12 volt. That would connect to there where it says power. Or I could just keep it connected. But if you're gonna keep it connected, just, just keep in mind this is 110 volts right here. So. This might hurt a little bit if you get shocked with that, so just be careful with that. And uh, you know, if you die by doing this, it's your fault, not mine. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay, there's the J3 connector. So there it is. I'm just gonna take this other one off so you can see it. All right. So, all right. Get that there. So this is the. That's where I need to actually connect the USB ASP. Put that back on the tripod. Hopefully you can see me here. Yeah, hey, put this up. Oh. All right, so this is actually where I said I needed the uh, where my little dad is with the piece. All right, so I need to hook up this. Uh, it's keyed, so you can't. You can only go one way. All right, and this goes into J3. There's another key right there, and it goes right into there. All right, and that's it. So the center pins. Now I gotta connect this to a USB and I'll from here I'll go to my computer and with a uh, video camera. So that's it for hardware wise, cabling, that's it. So all right, now we gotta load the uh, software and get it going. Cool. All right guys, so now that we have everything wired in correctly, um, you don't have to apply power to the board. Uh, the USB ASP will actually provide power to the ML chip. So you gotta make sure the driver is installed first. So I'm gonna go to this page right here. Uh, sparks.gogo.co.nz uh, this is the link right there and I'm going to download this Z uh, diag here. What's funny is this is, it reminds me, it reminds me of software defined radio it, uh, the same way we load the drivers for the uh, USB dongles or one of these things right here you can see it so if you ever mess with software defined radio it's the same way you install the driver to make it work with uh, SDR Sharp so, same tool at least. I'm going to go back to downloads here. And downloads. Extract it. If this is anything like, I tell you, I've never run this before, so I don't know what's going to happen, but if there's anything like, you're going to go to option, list all devices. If this is anything like optical touchscreen, I want to load a driver for the. USB ASP. And let's go install driver. 
So I just dropped, hit the uh, drop down list and chose USB ASP and then I hit install driver. So let's go back and go back to my device manager. And I'm plugging and plug it back in and see what happens. Looks like we're good to go. Alright. Um, okay, so let's uh, go to the next step. I'll be back. Alright guys, so I went back to the uh, the TH3D uh, page here. These guys, are, uh, these guys do a pretty good job making a, a complete firmware package. And so just make sure you download this full firmware package. I've already downloaded the uh, package already. It's a pretty big file. It's 468 megs. So I'm going to wait for that to download. And I will be back and... Uh, I'm going to unpack it and install it. So we'll see what happens. So I've never installed firmware on this uh, on a 3D printer before, but I do this all day long with other equipment like servers and firewalls and routers and phone systems and you name it, pretty much everything IT related. So um, it's so interesting to see. Actually, what's funny, this reminds me of uh, the old old days of like uh, satellite, <coughs> the satellite bootleg uh, programming, you know, with the Atmel chips and stuff. That's how we used to do it. The, Call them the Amiga boards, but uh, that was like probably 10 or 15, 20 years ago. All right, all right, guys. Now that I have the uh, package open, uh, like I said, I'm just a guy trying to figure this out. So I'm going off the same materials up I see on the internet and see if I can figure it out. All right, so I'm going to look open this open firmware Windows dot bat. All right, let's see what happens. Run. So it's going to upload this guy. It looks like custom firmware package. Yeah, actually, another reason why I'm actually upgrading the uh, bootletter firmware is because uh, I also want to change to a uh, E3D hot end. So, all right, so here we go. Let's see uh, next step here. Back here. All right, guys, back here. So, all right, so you need to first hit tools and then go choose ANET version one board right there. And then go to tools again, and then for the uh, programmer, choose USB ASP, and then it should just be a matter of hitting this burn bootloader from what I read. So let's try and see what happens. So okay, looks like it's done. So I read that you might get some warnings. Let's see, verify reading. Okay. All right, so it looks like we're done. I mean, that was pretty basic. Um, it only took a couple seconds there, so. All right, sounds good. So I guess now I can just shut it off and uh, I can start messing with the firmware. So I want to get this auto leveling bed working and the uh, possibly an E3. I already have the E3D hot end. I just got to install it. Well, I got to print out the parts to, to make it uh, work with my uh, carriage. But uh, all right, so if you're interested in watching the uh, firmware, then uh, we'll get it going. Cool.